Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, the 16th of July and Friday, the 17th of July, 2015. We do not do market previews typically for Fridays, and we certainly won't make this Friday, which is options expiration for July. The exception, here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart. You wouldn't tell from this chart that there was some action on the downside this afternoon because it ended up fizzling out after finally showing us some action. We haven't seen action in the afternoons much for a while. Uh, but it ended up uh, leading to nothing. Uh, we're uh, back above that uptrend line. We're at 2104 on the ES. Uh, we're back above uh, the 206250 by you know a fair margin, but we're still obviously in this horrible, uh, you know, let's call it 2120 to 2040 area that we've basically been playing in 80 point range now since back in mostly in all of February. And we're really back where we were at uh, the end of Thanksgiving. So there's not a lot of exciting things to say here. Net for the day, the S&P lost one point. Here's a look at the S&P cash index, one and a half points. The NDX was up only four. So it was a very contained day, probably one of the slowest we've, we've seen for a while in the morning, although the afternoon was a little better. Uh, Socks dropped four points, also not a big deal. Biotech's NBI up 27. Note the gap up here, the close above the risk line. But it was a gap up. We closed lower than we opened. So if we got back down, we've actually got a floating island at highs. That would be uh, not pretty for the biotechs. Google uh, literally lost 22 cents, pretty much uh, non factor for the day. Apple was uh, up a buck 20, actually. The VIX closed down 14 cents back in that low 13s range. Nothing exciting there. Crude oil went lower, closing at uh, 51.65 for the session. Uh, the YG, this is the gold contract. We talked about the potential breakdown here, and we are heading down lower. That does not look pretty for gold. Trend closed at uh, 1.27, which is right around the 10-day moving average currently of the trend. And if you see a white line there, it's actually three dots. Last three days have been almost identical in terms of volume, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week so far. 1.5 billion shares uh, on the NASDAQ. Um, we did not probably get an options unraveling move. It would be tough to say that that happened. Here's a look at the ES in five minute time frame so you can see the open was actually flat for once, no gaps. Uh, we did try to drift higher in the first hour or so, but literally that was still in about a five, six point range for most of the morning. Came back to the VWAP heading into lunch. We're glued to the VWAP straight through the two hours of lunch, literally three points of activity for two and a half hours there. And then came the action, suddenly a breakdown to the downside. We made some money in futures, a little bit in stocks. Could have led to a bigger move, but of course, in the end, that fizzled. The volume did look better for the uh, back end of the session there than we normally see. Uh, but again, it fizzled and we ended up right back at the VWAP where we often are for the close of the session. Uh, NASDAQ side pretty much looks about the same. Here's a look at that. Uh, although it did take that move down to fill the gap on the NASDAQ side. All right. Uh, so what do we have left for the week? Well, if we have not seen an options unraveling move, it's still possible that we will get one. Um, it may not be a very exciting move because it isn't a triple expiration and this is a light volume uh, month of the year, so I wouldn't uh, hold out for anything uh, too major there. And then uh, in terms of data, we've gotten through the PPI and everything on the 15th, so we're on to the 16th. We've got the weekly continuing and initial jobless claims numbers before the market tomorrow. We've got Philly Fed 30 minutes in. Uh, we've got housing market index 30, 30 minutes in, and we've got Natty Gas an hour in, and then net long-term tick flows at the close on Thursday. Friday, more importantly, we've got the CPI and housing starts and building permits before the bell. Michigan sentiment 30 minutes in. We have a lot of earnings due out still. Um, we are in the core eight days of earnings. So today was the 15th. We saw uh, a few stocks report uh, today after the bell, including Netflix. Uh, and uh, so this is, looks like a shorter list, but uh, it's starting to pick up. And as we often will see in the core, eight days of earnings. So tomorrow should also be a reasonable day. Uh, there's AMD reporting, um, CTAS, Charles Schwab Corporation, Citigroup reports tomorrow, eBay after the bell, Google after the bell. That's obviously a big one for the market. Um, those are some of the biggest I see on Thursday. And then next week will be even more, especially on Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, we'll get a break from earnings on Friday and a break on Monday. There's not as many of them on those two days of the week. And then the real big numbers will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. I don't expect much for Friday just because of the uh, uh, just because of the uh, options expiration. So that's the actual options expiration day in July, usually a big buzzkill. A lot of people just take the day off. Um, 
But uh, hopefully we can still get an options on rallying move and some excitement on Thursday. Uh, get something going here. This has been a very slow market of late, especially considering everything going on in the world. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. If you have not yet taken a trial of our services, you can do so. We'll help you out for a couple weeks. Uh, if you do find these videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. Have a great trading week.